Howdy folks, here for another weekend shave. And I've been working on a series of uh, what I consider budget shaves. Arco being one of those. Going to be following it up with the uh, Clubman Musk. And I do have my Allen block with a rubber band. And not exactly the most inexpensive uh, witch hazel, but Humphreys. I have the uh, Arco whipped up here with a Omega Syntec bristle brush. And that's what it looks like inside there. And what I did is I took the, uh, the puck out of here and I took a cheese grater to it, grated it up, and then pressed it down into my shaving mug. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I let this uh, just stay out in the open air. I don't cover it up. The scent is still there. I know some uh, may not particularly care for the scent, it being a clean or a soapy type scent. Um, for me, I like it. doesn't bother me. I think it's a, it's a nice clean scent, so a clean scent doesn't, a soapy scent doesn't bother me. I don't find it offensive, in other words. Where, you know, some, some folks do. I understand. This brush here I had picked up online. Uh, I think it was right near the uh, $10 mark. And uh, what attracted me to it was the handle itself. I like the handle. It looked good. And I've been, I guess you might say, experimenting with, uh, with this synthetic knot. I've got a few brushes with that knot to see how it works for me. This, this knot is smaller, which uh, might, how can you say, work well with uh, somebody that's trying to use less product because with the smaller knot, it won't take up near as much uh, product. Uh, for me, they do have a little bit of scratch outside of that. Even that doesn't bother me. My shaver of the day is going to be, and you'll see some that are very similar to this, by the way, of a different name. This is a Luxor Pro. Um, it's made out of surgical grade uh, stainless steel. Um, it does have a post right there in support of the scales. Um, paid, I think, around $15 for it. Pretty inexpensive shaver. The blade of the day is going to be Perma Sharp. It's a, a half blade. Already pre-cut. A number of these pre-cut blades really aren't too terribly expensive. Get them in a pack by the hundred. In some cases, they'll come with your shaver. For me, I have not had any trouble um, getting Arco to lather. Lathering is not a problem for me with Arco. I don't feel like it has a slickness issue either. I just think some people just have a hard time getting past the scent. Because even with the with this sitting out in the open for as long as I've had it in the mug, I've had it there for a while, it still has a pretty good scent strength. So I guess, you know, depending on how you want to look at it, that's a, that's a positive thing about this particular soap, is it does hold its scent. I wouldn't say it dissipates over time. Which I feel like is pretty good if my nose can pick it up. So in other words, if you're trying to make a transition from a, um, say like a uh, DE razor, 
and uh, you're not too sure how much money you want to spend on a uh, on a shave at, which I understand because I was in the same boat when I first started shaving with a shave at. These are not bad shavers. There's a number of them. A Parker, uh, Parker makes good shave heads, nice ones. I like them. You know, only have two, but you kind of get the feel for how they're made and what kind of shave you'll get with them, what kind of balance you get. At least in my opinion. And I understand, you know, it, uh, a shave head is uh, a lot of what you're learning with a DE razor will translate over to a, uh, to a shave head. For instance, um, pressure. You'll definitely learn about pressure. How to lather. You'll figure out also the difference in between what works well for you. Uh, Lather-wise with a DE razor might be slightly different with a, uh, a shave head or a straight razor. I don't know, for me it's, um, um, <clears throat> it seemed like to me the learning curve <laughs> wasn't too terribly steep. I, uh, the real adjustment was, um, the stretching, you know, and how much to stretch. It varies from, uh, in my opinion, from a, uh, uh, a D razor to a shave head or even a, uh, straight razor. You may have a need to stretch, you just need to figure out how much. And shave it doesn't have to be expensive either. Like I said, I'm thinking that puck, I got it for Christmas. I got two of them, matter of fact. Not this past Christmas, but the Christmas before. That's how long I've had this one. I think, uh, I think they're running right around $5 a puck. You can get the stick, maybe two fifty, maybe cheaper. Which to me, um, that's a uh, that's pretty inexpensive. And these pucks that are like this, they have a tendency to last a while. I did bloom this puck. I did take the uh, uh, the bloom water. Applied it to the face, hot towel. Appreciated ritual for me is pretty important. It took me a moment to figure out what works best for me. So if you're winter months, if you're especially if you're outside quite a bit, may compound your problem on how uh, dry your skin may be getting. To me, that's where I think maybe a um, uh, the pre-shave ritual routine might be more important. Where you might want to uh, uh, use something to uh, help keep your face moisturized. Maybe even a pre-shave oil. If your skin is getting dried out like that. Being outside in the wind in the winter. I like shaving with this with this soap. It's uh, like I say with that clean scent. Can't help from feeling how you say clean shaven. <laughs> like I say I don't have any problems with this lather. Of course, then you're following up with an aftershave, so. I guess you might say I, I don't if you're not wanting that clean scent to be sticking around when you're following up with your aftershave or your clone that, that'll pretty much take care of it anyway 
I don't. In other words, after I rinse, I don't really notice the scent hanging around after the rinse, so I don't really feel like this is a, a factor, I guess you might say. As you can see, it goes on just fine. Not a problem. Usually, if you're a person that, uh, for instance, I have a uh, shave stick here, and if you don't like this form, in other words, have a problem trying to lather with a stick, you can do the same thing with it. Take a cheese grater to it and press it down in your favorite shaving mug or bowl, and there you go. This one here has got holes in the top of it. So in other words, if it's a little bit damp and you put the cap back on, it's, it's getting air to it. Still has a scent to it. I guess you might say it's a testament to the uh, scent strength of the soap that is still hanging around. Even after being in open air for as long as it's been. You can pick up uh, single edge razors, usually the vintage ones, in other words a Schick injector, Micromatic, inexpensive. A vintage uh, DE razor, doesn't need to cost you a lot of money just to get started or even continue on as far as that goes. I mean, you can see many postings and many people commenting on how nice the, uh, for instance, a, a Schick, a Gillette, they still use them, enjoy the heck out of them. So I think some of these uh, razors, 50, 60, 70 years old, still shaving just fine. It says a lot to the, about the razor itself. I guess you might say it's been proven <laughs> if they're still staying around that long people are still interested in using them this says something about the design of the product just depends on what you like and what you enjoy shaving with in other words, the uh, modern um, uh, single edge razors, some of them are taking different kinds of blades. Quality of the blades, I think, uh, as it goes for consistency, has improved. I'm not saying you're not going to get a bum one from time to time because you will, but take in consideration how much you're paying for your blades. Most of these blades are pretty inexpensive. For me, I just enjoy the uh, experience of the uh, of the different shavers. After, uh, I guess you might say, so many years when I was shaving, because I had a beard for at least 15, going into 20 years, still got quite a bit of facial hair here, that uh, shaving with uh, the disposables 
compared to a shave like this to me there there's for me there just wasn't any comparison because with a lot of the disposables you hate to, sh to shave with at one time and then pitch it just to make sure that you're got a good keen edge for the next shave and with these blades depending on what kind you get you're, you're paying pennies five seven cents a blade on a double edge and then if you snap it in half for a shave it there you go <laughs> use it one time you're done pitch it fresh blade the next time should have sharp good blades every time you shave inexpensive don't have a problem with pitching them after you use them one time out block with a rubber band there but that's just me I have uh, tested some of them out to see how many shaves I can get with them that are smooth and comfortable unless it's a feather blade <laughs> yeah most of them most of these uh, shaves are going to be one and done with the blade when it comes to DE blades that work well for me uh, Astra SP the green ones in other words work rather well for me Persona and in certain razors, uh, the uh, Shark Super Chrome work well for me. And the uh, in my Shavettes, uh, Perma Shop Sharp works pretty well. Derby to a lesser degree, uh, but I have some DE razors that Derby blades work far better. Uh, Feather, in other words, the DE blade snap it in half work great. I definitely will get. I get more than just one shave, smooth, comfortable shave out of out of a feather. If you're wondering what it looks like on the inside of this thing, the posts are a little bit on the rounded side, but I have not had any issues. There's the blade itself there. I have not had any issues with it uh, staying put, trying to roll over the top of the post. I do have some shavettes that are like that. Where the, um, <laughs> for whatever reason, I don't guess the post just isn't quite tall enough. That is the one thing that's nice about a Parker, is they have a tendency to be more, uh, I guess you might say, pronounced in their post. Makes it a whole lot uh, nicer keeping that blade in place. Not all Shavettes, their loading mechanisms are the same. Uh, Irving Barber Company, their loading mechanism. It's got a little bit of a magnet to, to it. Really nice. Not a bad shaver, especially for around 15 bucks. I'm going to follow up with some uh, witch hazel here. So if you're just looking to get your shave on and keep it kind of inexpensive, whatever the shaver might be, you can find some inexpensive soaps out there that work just fine and last a good long while. Like say Arco the scent may be putting you off, but Prasso, most people don't have an issue with Prasso. I really like Prasso. Prasso's uh, <laughs> is pretty nice in my opinion. And not only that, you don't necessarily have to go with the soap, go with cream. A lot of those creams out there, depending on what website you go to, catch them on sale. You pay under five dollars for a tube of uh, shaving cream after shave of the day. This after shave I got a while back. Um, sometimes when I uh, shop online, I have a tendency to get more than one, especially if it's on sale and I know I'm going to like it. Uh, I paid five dollars. That's pretty expensive. Five dollars. And <laughs> my wife is not a real big fan of musk scents, but this this one here she does like. So it's always a plus when the significant other appreciates the, the scent. And I appreciate the price and how it makes my face feel. It's pretty good stuff. I like it. Once again, shade with some Marco today. Like I say, you can always take a stick. Take a cheese grater to it, 
press it in your favorite bowl or mug. This was the brush of the day. I got this for Christmas also. And that's where the Arco ended up at in my shaving mug. And this one here comes by the way of Austria. This is, uh, don't know if you can see. I don't know if it's going to focus for you or not. If you can see that, it's Austria. It's pretty cool. It's amazing how things travel around the world. At any rate, this is the end of my shave. Stay safe and smooth shaves to you.